please help me welcome Victoria Hurd! Good evening and thank you all for joining us on Speak Out where we like to talk about <coughs> conditions that are not commonly known in our society. Today we have the pleasure and the privilege of interviewing a young woman with a condition by the name of penubulitis. That's a tongue twister. Penubulitis, which is an eye condition that involves the inflammation of the eye. Tonight, she is going to share her story. Let us welcome up Miss Corey Fonville. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. That is good. That is good. Now, today we are discussing your eye condition, yes. penuveitis. Please share with the audience, share with us all, because I know it's a rare condition, what it is and what your experience has been. What was your first interaction with this particular condition? Well, I do have penuveitis, and uveitis pretty much just means the inflammation of the eye. And pan just means it's all over my eye instead of just in the uvea. Um, I first got diagnosed when I was in high school, I was about 14 or 15, and the conversation, as far as I can remember, was, oh, you have an eye condition, you need to take these drops. And that was pretty much all I truly remember as a 14, 15, 16-year-old. So I didn't take it too seriously at the time. Okay, okay. Sounds like it could be a bit scary to realize just the magnitude. At what point did you realize the magnitude of the condition that you had? I honestly didn't realize how serious it was until I um, had to get surgery. Basically, the drops they gave me caused me to have what's called a cataract, which is a blurriness on the lens of the eye. So I couldn't see as perfectly as I used to. I used to have perfect 20-20 vision. So I realized, okay, this is something. Like, I, I can't cheer like I used to. I can't do my homework like I used to. So when I was a junior in high school, I had to get cataract surgery. And I remember sitting in the, the waiting room, all these old people were around me with their bifocals on, relaxed, watching, you know, reading their magazines and whatnot. And I was panicked, like, oh my gosh, you're about to cut into my eye and I'm only, you know, 16 years old. So that was when I realized, oh, this is serious. Oh my goodness, that sounds so scary. It was. Oh my gosh. So you said you had the condition or you developed the condition initially when you were a teenager. So now many years later, what does it look like? For you, what's a typical day like in the life of someone who has this condition? Well, it can be varied. Um, for me personally, there are good days and bad days. The doctors like to say flares, but when I think of flares, I think good weeks or good months or good okay. years. But it's not like that. I literally can wake up in the morning, maybe I'm jolted up by a sound, maybe my son's crying, and my eye will literally rip open. And I can feel it and be in pain because all the, the stuff they've done to my eye, the drops and the shots, have caused my eyes to be really weak and dry. So some mornings I'll wake up and it'll rip and I'll basically spend the rest of my day in pain, laying in the bed, waiting for my eye to heal. But then other days I'll wake up, I feel like the birds are chirping, the sun is shining, and I can go off and, and live a productive life. So sometimes it's a bit depressing. And then some days I just have to put my big girl pants on and say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna persevere on and, and do just what anybody else would do, being a, you know, having a spouse, having a child, having a business. You have to do what you have to do. That's amazing. That's right. You just keep, don't let it stop you. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So what is, what would you say is probably one of the most trying aspects of the condition? Is it the waking up in the morning part of it? Is it, you know, driving? Is it, what aspect of life do you feel like it impacts the most that is difficult? I think the most trying part of the condition actually isn't in the actual condition itself, but it's in the bureaucracy of having this condition. Because it's rare, insurance likes to put a lot of things in place to make it hard, so my, all my doctors agree that I should have been on a shot that would have made my quality of life a lot better. But the insurance, if anybody's dealt with insurance, knows that you, know, you gotta try A, B, C, D, E to Z first. So I had to go through a lot of really rough medications that were really hard for me that didn't work. And we knew they weren't gonna work before I could get the medication I needed just for, you know, even with insurance that kind of stuff so just dealing with you know not being able to have insurance and having drugs that cost a lot because only a couple of people are taking it it makes it really hard to stay positive through the experience so it's not really the disease because you're managing that and you can deal with that internally and stay positive mm -hmm. it's dealing with the outside people going and saying oh i need disability going and saying oh i need insurance going and saying oh i need help with my medical bills that's the hardest part okay 
Wow, so it definitely sounds like you've been through a lot. Yes. And based, off the, based off of what we've talked about so far, it sounds like this condition, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like this condition may be sort of a cocktail. Like, you know how there are certain conditions that we've talked about on the show before where they try one thing, you know, try something else, there's no rhyme or reason or you know exactly, oh, this is, this is what you need to do, this is the condition, this is how we make it better, boom, it's done. It sounds like you've got to try this, and like, how do you react to this, and let's try that kind of piecemeal it together to try to make it work. Is, would you say is that a fair statement? Is that yeah. kind of like how it was? Or is it more exactly. like, oh, this is what it is, and we know what to do, we just can't do it yet, maybe because of the insurance or something else? No, it's definitely a cocktail. Everybody that I've come across with uveitis or that I've heard stories about is different. Nobody's the same. And so doctors, you know, because it's rare, a lot of them aren't even educated. It took me a while to even find a specialist, and there's only a few specialists, so sometimes you have to drive a long way for one, but they pretty much are like, okay, well, let's try this, because with UVI, this, a lot of times they don't know the cause, so they're just treating your symptoms. So when a new symptom pops up, it's like, okay, what are we going to do for this particular symptom? Then when the side effect of the drug they give you happens, what are we going to now do for that symptom? So it is a lot of practicing medicine when it comes to <laughs> UVI, this. Um, but I'm very pleased with the team that I've now put together for myself, and I feel like we're all on the same page. That is amazing. Well, I definitely am glad. It sounds like you've definitely overcome a lot. Um, one question for you, because I know I did do a little bit of research, and I saw that you have a YouTube video about the condition <laughs> and encouraging those who are around you who may be, who may at some point be diagnosed with the condition or anybody who may be experiencing similar symptoms. If you could give a piece of advice to any one of those people who watch the video who may feel like, oh, I'm experiencing these same symptoms that she's talking about on this YouTube channel that she has, what's one thing you would say to them right now? I would say advocate for yourself. I spent years with physicians that didn't have what I wanted for my life at heart. They, they had their own ideas of what I should be hoping for, what prognosis and things I should have. But, you know, sometimes you have to get rid of those people. Don't be afraid to fire your doctors. Get a team of people who understand that what you want for your quality of life is what you want, and that's what you want to strive for. Don't let somebody else determine what your outcome can be. Because if I was listening to those doctors, I would be blind, sitting someplace, having somebody feed me and take care of me. But instead, I fought, and now I have my own business. Now I am getting married. Now I, you know, I have a child. And I'm being able to live a pretty, per, you know, professional and happy life. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. If you want to know more information about this particular condition or you want Corey's information, we definitely have it available. Thank you all so much, and thank you, Corey, for speaking out about it. Thank you.